So hi guys, yeah, my name is King Ming. So uh, before I start my presentation, uh, let me begin with a short demo. So here, you have my Arduino equipped with a BLE chip. And here, my Nexus 5. So let's start with the demo. So I've mirrored, sorry, I've mirrored the Android screen over there to the screen. So let's see, I've managed to find my Arduino, Arduino connect to it. Notice that the light has turned to green, from red to green. So yes, okay, so now let's try to toggle the light. You can see, if I toggle, it turns blue. The, the blue LED toggles, and the same for the yellow LED. And at the same time, I also can send data back from the Arduino to the phone. Mm -hmm. So I have a button here, when I press it, see the Arduino sends one to the central, and I receive a, the number one on the phone. Mm -hmm. So actually there's a slight delay on the <coughs> Android screen monitor, about three seconds. Okay, so yeah, so let's begin. Okay, so yeah, about me. So I'm still technically a student. <laughs> yeah, final year, end years computer science, but I'm still waiting for my results. Okay, so okay, let me skip this slide. So why, where am I currently working at now? So I'm working at a company called Algo Access. So this is a med tech startup that helps opticians to retrieve, manage, and process their data. So what's the workflow like in my company? <coughs> so we deal with these machines like this. So this is a optician machines help to measure your eyesight. So what we do is that we have actually a Raspberry Pi. So this Raspberry Pi connects to this optician machine to retrieve the data, transmit it via BLE to, to an iPad, then the iPad transfers data to a cloud server. We also deal with machines with image features. So in this case, uh, images, they, they're quite big, so we don't use BLE. We, in fact, uh, we use a uh, access point instead, a Wi-Fi access point. So, uh, yeah, I still, we are still finding ways if, that, if there's any cheaper or more elegant solution, so I hope to we'll discuss with you after this. <laughs> okay, so introduction to the Bluetooth. So first we begin with Bluetooth Classic. So this is the conventional Bluetooth which most of you should be familiar with. 2.4 gigahertz, range about 10 meters, 2.1 megabits per second. So, but some people are not happy with this because Bluetooth, although its energy consumption is less than Wi-Fi and 3G, is still considered high for some people, so that's why BLE came into the picture. This was introduced in 2010 by Bluetooth Special Interest Group. So there are additional names to this called Bluetooth Smart and Single Mode and <coughs> BLE, they all mean the same thing. Uh, if you encounter this term known as Dual Mode, it means that a particular Bluetooth chipset supports Classic and BLE. So the target applications. So when BLE was envisioned, it was meant to target wireless battery power sensors and location <coughs> tracking. So to meet this, the requirements must be low power, low cost, low bandwidth. So how does it do it? <coughs> oh, simple, but don't turn on the radio chip <laughs> most of the time. But if you do have to turn on the radio chip, right, transmit small packets. Only the uh, maximum transmission needs only 20 bytes. So you have to be aware of this. So what's on the agenda? So first I'll begin with all the theoretical concepts. The BLE is quite a complex protocol, so you have to yeah, you have to know the concepts first. Then I'll begin with how the I design this and the coding. So because of the time constraint, I will not be going through iOS and Raspberry Pi. I will only go through Arduino and Android. So first thing, central and peripheral. So you can see on the picture here, peripheral advertises to central and central connects to peripheral. In this case, my uh, Arduino is acting as the peripheral, the phone is the central. So you see that there are some uh, terms, like iOS generally uses central and peripheral, Android uses client server and chipset manufacturers use master and slave. They generally mean the same thing, although there are some definition differences. Okay. So you can see from here, this picture, a central can connect to many peripherals at the same time. But a peripheral can only connect to one central at any one time. This is rather important. Okay, so device compatibility. Which devices can use BLE? Uh, you can read off on the slide, but the important thing is the ones in red. So uh, Android supports BLE as of 4.3, but these two particular phones, phone models, Nexus 7 and Galaxy Nexus do not. Similarly for the Android 5.0, uh, they support the peripheral mode, but Nexus 4, 5, 7 do not. The reason being that uh, Google did not send these phones for certification, so they cannot support these phones. So take note when you're doing BLE development on these particular phones. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. In terms of specification, is it like required? Required? to submit it for testing, otherwise you are not allowed to support Yes, people. correct, yeah. You, you need to, to send your device for certification in order to officially support. 
uh, I'm not firm, not sure whether there's royalty or not. Uh, yeah. So concepts. First thing, the UUID stands for Universally Unique Identifier. So this is actually a 128 bit value. The reason why it's so long is because if you randomize it, you can still achieve a practical uniqueness. Yeah. So a uh, special case for 16 bit. Uh, the Bluetooth special interest group has actually reserved some 16-bit values. I will talk about it later. So in case, okay, for 16-bit values, right, there actually is a 128-bit value behind it. What you do is that the 16-bit values, you inject it inside here to get the full 128-bit value. Okay. So attribute, yeah, anything that has a UID is an attribute. So it generally refers to this, which I'll come to it later. So the gap and the get. So first thing, generic access profile. So this is actually advertising. So it's what the peripheral sends advertisers to the world, the information. So this includes the name, whether uh, the central can connect to it, and what features does it support. So the next one, the, the get generic attribute profile. So this defines how to exchange data once the connection has been established between both parties. So this get defines services, characteristics, and descriptors, which will be in this slide. So the first thing, service. So the service is actually basically what uh, features your peripheral supports. So you can, if you were to adopt a particular 16-bit service like battery heart rate, immediately everybody will know. But then if you don't wish to, you have to in, uh, introduce your own custom UID, 128-bit. Yes. <coughs> Sorry. So a service is made up of many characteristics. So this is actually the most important of the three. So characteristic is the one that actually holds the value. It defines what is being transferred between, from the peripheral to the central. So uh, characteristics has multiple properties. Think of it as permissions. So you can see you can read, write, write without response, and notify. <coughs> the important, two important ones here are write and write without response. So the difference is <coughs> for write, if a central writes a particular characteristic to the peripheral, the peripheral must acknowledge. But for write without response, don't have to. So a characteristic is made up of multiple, descriptor, multiple descriptors. So this, you can think of it as a metadata, but it's usually optional. However, there's a special case. This client characteristic configuration descriptor, I'll come to it when we reach the Android programming. So to recap the previous slide, first, we have the get. A get is made up of one or more services. Inside each service, <coughs> one or more characteristics. And each one can take on this particular set of properties. And inside each, each characteristics, zero or more descriptors. Clear at this point? Okay. So the connection procedure. So the first thing, the peripheral advertises out. And the central scans. Scans means to look for devices. So the central receives the advertising packet and attempts to connect to it. So once the central connects to the peripheral, the peripheral must stop advertising because the peripheral, peripheral can only connect to one central at any one time. So connect success. So what we need to find out more. So the central will try to attempt to discover services. So the peripheral sends back the services data and then we still need to find out more, which is the characteristics. And the peripheral will send it back. So normally up to this point is good enough. If you want to discover characteristics, you just take one more step. Okay, so let's begin the requirements of the peripheral design. So what I have here is I need an indicator to decide whether there's an active connection or not. So there's a one red LED to indicate no connection, green to indicate active connection, and two more. Central, uh, <coughs> sorry, a blue LED and yellow LED that can be controlled from the phone, and a button to trigger sending data back to the central. Okay, so this is how we set up here. So the key thing here is this particular Bluetooth low energy shield I'm using. This is based on NRF8001 chipset. Okay. So the, to plan for this, we first we need to define all these values in the peripheral. So we have to define the names, define is connectable, yes, because we want the phone to connect to it, and the features. Since we, using a, we are building a custom device, I will have to define the full 128-bit service ID. Know that this particular field here, this is not accessible via Android. Although iOS can see this value. <coughs> okay, so let's now let's define <coughs> the get. So we begin the service. Do you yep. randomly choose a UUID or do you have to like register for one? 
Uh, if you are using a custom UID, okay, you can randomly pick one. It's up to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just not the 16-bit ones. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we have one characteristic. This is in charge of the LED. So what I what I have here is that if this particular characteristic receives the letter B, it will toggle the blue LED. And same if you receive letter Y, it will toggle the yellow LED. Then I also have another characteristic. This is in charge of the button press. So whenever the if I press the button over there, this characteristic value will change. And no, notice that this property has a has a notify property here. So this means that the central can be notified if there's a value change in the characteristic. Uh, I have so, a question. So if I write this out, respond, then uh, there might be a chance that when you press from, from a button from the phone, but uh, this uh, Adreno will not uh, blue it's, or yellow. It's possible. Right? It's possible yeah. it may not receive. The value time is only a uh, bit. It's only a child. Can it be? Uh, can, there can be more values. I mean, this is just the uh, one I choose for this device. Uh, why do you want one question? Yeah, sorry. Is there any requirement on you UID being uniform on device? Oh, sorry, sorry. Or, I did catch the question. Is again. there a requirement of you UID being a real UID or just is it uniform device? Uh, is this UID that you have there? Yes. They don't look like properly generated. Uh, yeah, that's why I said it. I just decided myself. Some random number. It can be anything as long as it's not a 16-bit ID. Huh? So to, to show that it's not an official one. It's a custom UID. <laughs> okay, so the Arduino, I'll now begin the Arduino code. So I'm using C, ID 164. The library I'm using for... Actually, I'm using two libraries. The first one is by Nordic. But the problem with this library is that it is very difficult to use. It's very cryptic. And documentation is not a lot. So this guy, Sandin Mystery, he has wrote, he has written actually a tin wrapper around this. So this is what I'm using. Okay, sorry. So now let's go to the Arduino code. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, so at the start, we import the necessary libraries. So you see here I've defined the max number of bytes per write. This is actually the maximum transmission unit. Then okay, this is the uh, defining all the necessary pin values. Okay, so sorry, let me go back to the slide. Okay, so here, here I am. So the service. So I begin by defining the service. <coughs> so the service UID. Then I'll define the two characteristics. Uh, basically, they are 10 and 20. Okay, then also I'll define the properties. Read, write without response, and read and notify. So I hold some uh, variables to variables to hold the LED state. Okay, let's begin, begin, begin. Okay, so you see here, <coughs> I set the device name, local name, connectable to true, and I'll advertise this particular UID of service one. Okay, then I'll add service and characteristics to the API. Here, I also have an event handler, so you can think of it as a, as a <coughs> interrupt, uh, similar to interrupt, whenever the, see, to call when the central has written a new value to characteristic. So let's say if I receive a letter B or Y, this particular function characteristic return will be called. So I have it somewhere below, I'll come back to it later. Okay, so here we come to the loop function. So this one will continuously loop until I receive an active connection. So this is done by, if we'll get reference to central is connected or else it'll be now. So if it's not now, that means there's a connection ready. Then I'll refresh the connection LED. So what this function does is that it will switch the LED to green. Okay, so let's continue. So here I have the, the button, to detect the button press, the debouncing function. Whenever uh, the button is pressed, I'll increment the number and I'll send the number back. Okay, so here you can see the refresh connection LED. Okay, so what happens when I receive a value? From the central. So this particular callback will be called here. If the new value is a B, I'll toggle the blue, and if it's a Y, I'll toggle the yellow. So, okay. Any questions so far at this point? <coughs> Done. May I ask about the uh, OS support? So I only see the Android and the uh, um, Mac OS. Oh, I, Sir? Yeah, iOS. So there's no um, Linux? Uh, Okay, I didn't mention that. Uh, Linux, they come with the Blue Z library. Blue yeah, API already. So I think most of it support. I'm not sure exactly which kernel version it supports, mm -hmm. yeah, but Linux generally can. Yeah. It has to be 5.5 five, uh, version. 
five something, the version of the Z. And yeah. four something, it doesn't. Okay. So is it uh, free or? Uh, yeah, yeah, to yeah, 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 it's free. We install library, then we have a lot of people on the internet. Uh, so I need uh, Ubuntu with the dongle, you can basically. So, so uh, you can, like, for example, you can make Raspberry Pi with a Bluetooth dongle yes. as mm. a sample. Uh, uh, mm. So totally good. Yes. Too bad I'm not demoing now. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, so let me continue. So now I'll move on to the how do we design the, the central. So in this case, I'll be using Android. So uh, for most cases, right, if you Google for BLE examples, you find that the BLE code and the UI code is mixed up in one big class. I personally don't like this. So I separate it out. So I have three classes here. Oh no, sorry. Two classes and one interface. So here, BLE handler. This one deals with the Android BLE API, the main activity, and this is an interface. Okay, so the reason I designed this way is okay, it's because BLE APIs are asynchronous in nature. So I have this interface to prevent a tight coupling between the UI and the handler, BLE handler. Okay, so the Android, I, I'm using a Nexus 5, running the latest Android OS. Okay, okay so let me begin. Okay, so how do we write for this? The first important, most important thing is in the manifest, we need to specify that we need the Bluetooth features, of course. Okay, then, okay, let me move back. Okay. Okay, so you notice I have the three, the three files here, handler, callback, and the main activity. So let me go to the main activity first. So in the main activity, the first thing you have to do is you have to check. I mean, Android is fragmented, so you have to check whether the OS is at least 4.3 and above. And that is not enough. Even if the OS is above 4.3, we still need to check whether the hardware exists on the phone. Okay, so now let's, let me go back to the callback. So actually this is an interface, it's basic, basically what the UI must implement. The handler will report back whenever it goes through the steps. So let me go back to the steps again. Okay, so steps 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So each one reflects the individual step. For Android, step 4 and 5, they are combined. Only iOS, they are separate. So let me go back here. Okay, so this is the main thing. So you notice I've defined the UIDs, all this, or the of the peripheral, those that I want to find. Okay, let me go down, go down. Okay. So okay, this particular data structure here, the hash map. So the, the reason I have this right is because <coughs> advertisement packets come continuously. So you need a way to filter them. So I have to filter by putting a, every Discover device inside this hash map. So if I see it again, I will not, I will ignore it. Okay. So this is actually the, the Android API. Uh, just define the Bluetooth manager, blah blah. Okay. So this first, I'll begin with step one, scanning. So this is the scan API here. I'll clear all the found devices. I'll define all the necessary callbacks. Then I'll start the scan. Okay. So for Android. <coughs> Google has changed the API for Android 5.0. That's why I have this if else, if it's above and equal to lollipop, then I will do this. Yeah, it's a fragmentation issue. So for below 4.4 and below, then I will just do another way. Okay, so we just start scan. So where do we get the result? In step two, here. This is actually the callback that I have to implement. So I'll receive the, the application packets here. So notice that I check. If I see again, if I have not seen it, be seen it before, then I'll report to the UI. This is the UI. Okay. So <laughs> after step two, step three. Then, oh, sorry, it's still step two. Where's my connect? Yeah. Okay. It's still, this is still step two. So I'll do a connect get here. This is actually from here to here. Okay. Notice that I put this comment here. So this is actually a uh, there's a bug on Samsung phones. <laughs> yes. Uh. Yeah. This is a fragmentation. So this particular function here has to be caught from the UI track for Samsung phones. Okay, so okay, let's move on to step three. Where's step three? Okay, step three. So once I connect, I'll get a callback here. I means I've connected to. So let's step three. After step three, we discover service, which is what I'm doing here. Discover service. So now let's move on to step four. Services discovered. The next callback. So step four and five. Blah, 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 discover all the all the code. Okay, so now this is the one I was referring to just now. The client characteristic configure descriptor. This is a special case for Android. If you want to listen to notifications, you have to set this value. For iOS, don't have to. 
Okay, so after that, we'll report back to the UI. So here, on characteristic change. So this is another function. This is actually used when I press a button on the, on the Arduino, then you send back the value. So this is the callback that will be called whenever a value is being sent back. Okay, so let's continue. So let me go to debug mode. Let's do a debug step through of the code here. So I press the start, start scan button. So here, the breakpoint is now here. I'm at step one. So let me continue. Start scan. So immediately I found the first device. So the first device here, okay, I don't know what that is. So let's continue. I report to the UI. See, the UI shows already. So I found my device. So let me continue. Okay. So, okay, let me press this. Okay, so now I'll, I'll attempt to connect to the, my Arduino, see, here. So now, I'm set 3 here. See, I'm connected to it. So now I attempt to discover services. You can see here. Intro to Arduino BLE. And there's connections already. So now I'm already at step 4 and 5. So this is after I discovered services. Services was discovered. Okay, so now I'll try to toggle the blue LED. So now the blue LED is currently off. When I press the toggle blue, blue button, here. So the UI calls this function, write this to LED characteristic. So I'll attempt to write the letter B. I'll convert it to a bytes first. Then set the value and write. So it, you the Arduino has received the letter B and it has toggled the blue LED. Similarly for the yellow LED, okay, it has received the letter Y. And the yellow LED is on now. Okay, so now what happens when I press the button? So this particular callback has been called because the value has changed. So you can see here, I received the value 1. So when no more I press next, the UI will be updated. You see value one. And when I press it again, okay, continue. Okay, value two. So this shows how do you do two-way communication between the central and the peripheral. Okay, let's go back to white slides. Okay. So issues with BLE. So you have seen, right, you have to limit your data tran transfer to 20 byte chunks. This is a protocol limitation. Then, uh, like just now you asked, right, uh, how come I use string and chart? Actually, you can support UTF-8 values. So, but the reason is I use ASCII here is because of the Arduino compatibility. Yeah, <laughs> the compatibility, yeah. Okay, so again, for central, all callbacks from BLE APIs are not on UI thread. So if you want to immediately update the UI, you have to use a handler or something similar. Then, uh, the moment you turn, uh, turn off Bluetooth or you restart your phone, you have to do a rescan. This is, again, a BLE uh, <coughs> protocol limitation. So in the past, well, before Android 4.3 was a huge issue. Yeah, so Google did not support it, it then, so every manufacturer came out with their own proprietary library. Yeah, but thankfully that era is over now. But problems still remain, so OS fragmentation, I'm sure this is very familiar for Android developers. Uh, only 55% of the Android devices support BLE. And even fewer support peripheral mode. You see here, uh, Android supports peripheral mode as of Android 5.0, but this main, the main phones who actually have Android 5.0 actually do not support peripheral mode, but in the hardware level. So I'm not sure exactly, exactly how many devices actually support peripheral mode. Yeah, so something to take note of. Uh, APIs are considered new, so it's very common to encounter buggy functions on Android. And 
if you're using developing on phones below Android 5.0, prepare for frequent connection drops. This is an API issue. Then max BI connections. Uh, Google has actually repeated this uh, in the Blue Droid code. So Blue Droid code is the name of the Bluetooth stack in Android. So in Android 4.3, you can only connect to four BLE devices. This is on the entire phone. They have raised this on uh, 4.4 to 5.0 to 7. Still very low number. And another thing is that there's no API call to indicate that scanning has stopped. So the problem with this is that on certain phones like Samsung, it stops at 12 minutes. I noticed this phenomenon. And there's no way that your app will know that it stops at 12 minutes. Some phones, it stops maybe shorter or longer. So the solution to this is that you have to restart scan at regular intervals if you want to constantly detect Bluetooth devices. Is there, is there an API call to determine whether scanning is in progress? Uh, can, you, yeah. can you inquire about whether scanning is in progress? I believe there is. I, I can't remember it offhand. Yeah, I believe there is. But then why, 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 why do you need to scan uh, regularly? Because once you connect, right, then is it okay? Uh, because of certain use cases, like uh, for example, location tracking, your Bluetooth has to be constantly on and scanning to detect new devices. So if you assume that it goes on indefinitely, you will face issues, especially on Samsung phones. 12 minutes only. So you have to repeat the... Uh, yes, scan. stop and scan, stop and scan. Okay. Then uh, different scan results. Okay, so this will be the further reading part. Yeah, so bugs on Samsung phones. This particular function, I did not use this, but take note that if you try to do service UID filtering, it will not work. Yeah, yeah, this is a, still an ongoing bug. As of 4.4, but I'm not sure 5.0. I don't have a 5.0 Samsung phone to check this. So as I pointed out earlier, connect get must be called from UI thread. Then for HTC, their LE scan, their Bluetooth LE scan is slow, it's much slower than what you would normally expect. So on a, to a side issue, right, when you try to scan for classic devices, HTC phones will return you classic and smart. This is actually an API violation. You're not the HTC phones are not, a phone, this API is not supposed to return a BLE device if you try to scan for classic. So what I suspect is they're using the same functions behind the scenes for both classic and BLE scan. That's why it's so slow. Okay, so uh, for the ring, do I have enough time? Okay, then I just show a video. I did not mention about uh, BLE security, but this is something that you should take note. So uh, by default, everything in BLE is sent in the clear, no encryption, but they do support some AES or uh, AES128 encryption, but uh, you should not use it. Uh, this video will explain why. If you read the video, it's like, watch yourself at home. Oh, okay, sure. But do you want to see? Or you want to stop? Want me to stop now? We have, we have two more speakers, so I just want to... Oh, okay, okay, sure. Then I'll stop now. Yeah, but anyway, I'll, I will upload... Actually, everything is actually already uploaded to get up this link here. So, yeah, you can take a look there. Okay? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, any questions? one question. If I buy a Nexus 5, yes. uh, I can then, uh, the tool that you were using to debug, this is free? Oh. This is all free? So, sorry, I'm sorry, what? The what? tool free? that you were using to debug your so, application? That was uh, Android uh, Studio, mm -hmm. it's IDE. So, this is connected to your phone? Yes, correct. And you basically put a breakpoint? Yeah. So it, it, in fact, this is the tool that you use to develop Android apps. Yeah. It's the de facto tool these days. So it's free yeah, it's free, it's free. Yes. Um, I just want to ask, what is the security building with BLE so that only your device can connect to this one? Because just now when you are talking, I'm actually playing with your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So it, it, it looks like everybody can just be the server. Service Correct. Server. Yes. Right. Yes. Any device can connect to it. So that uh, if you not want other bodies to connect to it, what? Uh, I don't. I don't think it's possible to block. Cannot. But what you can do probably is that you have implement your own application secure level security. Maybe the BLE device will like wait for this particular key to receive. If I don't receive this, then I just don't report anything to you. Yeah, some form of key exchange, yes. And, and I believe the video that <coughs> stopped it from yeah. showing, sorry, yeah. actually explains that the, AP, uh, the, the protocol level security is completely broken. Yeah, it's, it's so very you have to have application level security. So you have to roll your own. Mm, yeah. so you cannot use this for example, for anything like so that I Yeah, just basically I mean, assume, uh, basically <laughs> assume it's insecure connection, yeah. yeah. Uh, default encryption, you, you can enable secure property inside. Uh, but I've not personally used it before. Yeah, I only know this. <laughs> can you scan the peripheral? Like, Sorry. Can you scan the peripheral and then like, plug it into the 
basically? Can. In fact, there are iOS apps that can do it. I'm not sure about Android. I think there is this really. You can. There's a tool, an uh, old app, I think called Light Blue. So you, the moment you scan, you it will pick up all the services characteristics. Then you can just click a button clone. <laughs> then you can pretend to be the device already. Yeah. Any questions? Any last yeah. questions? Oh, okay. Is there any other implementation for this VLE other than sending small amount of data? You mean any other use cases? Other use cases yeah. Uh, location tracking like iBeacons. iBeacons actually don't send any data. What they actually advertise is, is ID. So the moment you, okay, when you take your phone, you have an app, constantly scans the background. The moment I receive, I see that oh, I've detected this particular iBeacon or something similar, I'll do something based on it. So there's no data trans transmission involved, except that I, re I know this VRE device exists with this particular ID. Okay. See what? Yeah. Okay. Wait, I'll, I'll make a single on one on us. Okay. And then okay. You can, you can take the question. Okay. Does anybody have a ThinkPad power adapter? Can you wait to see what's going on? I think it's a battery fault. It's a whole day. Right. It's showing still charging. You know, right. You can get around to this point in life. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can ask your question. Okay, okay, sure, sure. What would be the configuration that you have to make it use Bluetooth as a communication protocol for your uh, sensors as opposed to other protocols like XP or Wi-Fi? A low power, low power, yeah. Low power. Yeah. That, that's, why in, that's why it's in the name, low energy. I mean, I, I removed one slide here, but then it, the original slide was actually a comparison between the two products, uh, a classic and a PLE product. So the difference in battery life is like one is about two weeks, the other one is about one year. Mm. Uh, when you uh, talk about GATT, the, yes. uh, that's one, uh, when I read from the internet, they say that the uh, number of service, right? But mm. when you, uh, you don't mention about any service there. Yeah, I, I did. I mentioned about the service. Uh, yeah. But you mean the service name, like what you can do? But when I read there, so I think like you can uh, for reporting the location of the device. Sorry, uh, report location of what device? The uh, peripheral device. There's a service. Uh, uh, yes, it's, it's I'm not really sure it's on the sensor or on the peripheral. Uh, all services and all these are defined on the peripheral. The central does not define anything. So how about whenever you press a button on the, uh, <coughs> the peripheral, right? Mm. Set by a number, so that's one defined. That's but whenever you press a button, it's okay. the number one, two, three, four. Yes. Back to the phone, so. Uh, the service is defined uh, on the uh, peripheral also? Yes, all defined there. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I need to. Okay. We can take the questions after, after all the talks. Sorry, I.